reside. We are in the place where mind-blowing revelations reside. We are in the place where healing resides. We are in the place where deliverance resides. In other words, there's no excuse when you're in the house of God. Amen. Nothing can live in his house that is not of him. Amen. So make sure that your praise is of him. So let your praise match his goodness. Let your shout match his goodness. Hallelujah. A lot of times we say, Lord, I want you to move like you've never moved before. But it's so important to understand that if God is going to move like he's never moved before, which is impossible to do, but if he's not going to, if he's, he's going to move in your life like he's never moved before, that means you've got to do something in your life that you've never done before. Amen. We've got to be careful about putting standards on God that we ourselves will not live up to. Amen. If you're going to tell God to be good, then you be good. If you're going to tell God to be mighty, then you be mighty. Let your praise match what you're requesting of God. So if you say, God, be a mighty God, then give him a mighty praise. Wow. And they missed it at the emergency. Well, they missed it, so 
so God can make it up. Amen. He's going to do a miracle with us. Amen. So listen, we're in a season of time where God is moving. And understand when God is moving, hell loves to distract during these times. So do not, you know, think it's strange that when you enter into these seasons and times that the enemy brings on, he tries to bring us. He's not, he's not that creative. He cannot create sickness. But he will use sickness to distract you. He cannot create problems, but he will use problems to distract you. So think it not strange in these seasons as we begin to talk and we become more aware of our spiritual inheritance. Think it not strange when the enemy tries to do things, to use things in your life to cause you to become distracted about what God is building inside of you. I heard some of my spiritual father say, my spiritual grandfather, Apostle Skip Ward, he said, God's word is instruction because Christ was a constructor. So his word instructs. What does that mean? He feels on the inside. That's why it's called instruction. Because it starts in you. So the instruction is working on the inside of me. So in other words, you don't see what I'm looking like right now. Don't worry about it. Because he's working from the inside out. Amen. Lord, let's give God a great praise. Let's give him a great praise. We're going to give you our 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 great praise. We're here to take sides. We're here to take over. Amen. We take over for the kingdom. Amen. So, repeat after me. I am purpose. Say it with authority. I am purpose to be a life changer. I am purpose to be a kingdom citizen of Yahweh. Amen. I am purpose to be a changer. And those around me. It's important to understand that you just don't change atmospheres, you change people. You change things around you, praise God. So not only does the atmosphere change around you, people change around you. Don't sit next to me if you don't want to be changed. You can't come in here and panic at me. I'm not going to sit next to me if you're going to give a cute prayer. You don't know what I've been through, man.
thank y'all for praying because here's the thing. This same day last year, we were in the hospital. Didn't think I was going to make it. But God. Me down a long time ago, you know. Hey, but the guy said, "Hey, give me one year 
one year. Let me water it. Let me get some soil around it. Let me That's put good. sunshine on it. Let God's sunshine light yeah. shine on my face. Yeah. Hey, and if it don't produce any fruit, you can cut it down. Yeah. But Lord, but the Lord willing, He has produced much fruit. Yeah. And uh, it's just by the power of God that I'm standing up here today. Awesome. I'm so grateful for Teen Challenge. Uh, each one of us is in a short testimony. I'm fixing to start with mine, then we're going to go with these guys. Uh, my name's Blake. I'm 41 years old, and I feel like I walked around in the, in the, in, in the desert for 40 years. Wow. You know, like I always knew who God was, but he never was the centerpiece of my life. Wow. You know, uh, I was a heroin addict. I'm from Birmingham. I was a heroin addict for 14 years. And uh, when you said what you were doing last year, a year ago today, a year ago today, I had a needle in my arm. And, uh, and uh, Jesus had delivered me from that. <laughs> And I got drunk off in March of last year. When my brother dropped me off in the truck, he was mad about it, you know, because I was doing my thing out there. And I was doing the wrong thing, but I was mad, you know, and I felt the presence of the Lord standing. You've been down there. Yeah. At them steps, yeah. I felt like Jesus was out there with his arms up wow. like this. Like, where you been? I've been waiting on you. Wow. And I felt that right when I walked in there. Wow. So I hit the ground running. You know, because I wanted to change my life. Yeah. You know, like my brother went through in 2013, the same sinner, wow. Selma, and changed his life completely. Wow. So my family's always said, you know, you need to get some challenge. You know, and I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm like going for a year, you know. But finally, I looked myself in the mirror one day, like February of last year. Like, Blake, you got to change, you know. Like, you know, like the Lord... That I wasn't in walk, I wasn't walking in his will at all. You know, but Jeremiah 29 and 9 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you a hope in the future. And I stand on that. You know, and now like it's such a blessing to see miracles. Like I graduated three weeks ago. Wow. And um <laughs>
anyway, ever since then, I've been to Teen Challenge. You know, God's just working in my life. I'm getting closer to God. Uh, you know, it's just it's been an amazing experience. I love it. If it wasn't for Teen Challenge, I don't know where I'd be at. But, uh, you know, it's just an awesome feeling. And uh, it's all the praise to God, you know. Uh, and, you know, that's all I got, man. <laughs>
who let me walk in his kingdom and his righteousness forever. And these guys up here are a good reason that I'm still here. Amen. Amen. Myself and increase in you. Lord, let your light shine through me and uh, let these people know that there is hope. And uh, just, Lord, I just want to see what's going on in my life, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 Thanks, Tyler. <laughs> Thanks, Tyler. <laughs> Good I'm from uh, Dothan, Alabama. Um, I'll be 27 at the end of this month. I have two beautiful kids, a little girl. She should be one on St. Patrick's Day. And I just got to see both my son. He, he just turned six yesterday. That was the first time I got to see him in uh, five months, man. I've been in a revolving door really my whole life. My mom and dad were in and out of prison my whole life. I've been in and out of lockups since I was about 12 years old. And, uh, and the broad north in these past seven or eight years, I've been in recovery, you know. Uh, and uh, there's a process to embrace when it comes to this, you know. And faith, you got to have faith. you got to truly be able to stand on that. And uh, the thing that's different this time I don't understand exactly. I, I thought I've had this relationship with God before, at the beginning, seven, eight years ago. But the faith, the confidence, and the hope, and the, I see the light at the end of the tunnel. Yes, okay? yes. Yeah, but it is real. His wow. promise is real. Yeah. All that. There's a, you know, way. This is all back. This is, so right now, I know all that. Everything that I've been, been through, you have to have a solid foundation, a plumb line. You know, something to build your house on. Proverbs 24. 27 says, prepare your work outside, get everything ready for yourself in the field, and after that, build your house. Right. It's a process to embrace, and following his example, you, you receive his grace, his love, his mercy, and like that verse on the wall back there, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. You know, there is hope, and uh, Teen Challenge gives me an environment that I can build, build, build that foundation on, you know? You know, I, I don't see uh, my kids, uh, like I told you, my kids in the middle of yesterday, but they're going through a hard time. You know, and I feel uh, very guilty and there's some shame there. Would be a lot worse, the feeling would be a lot worse if I didn't have him with me right now. And I feel like we are the words and I'm speaking to y'all. Yeah, yeah. 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 The best thing for me to do right now is to stay focused on him. <laughs>
But I love the fact that he does not see us where we're at. He sees us how he created us. Because we'll see our faults, but God still sees greatness. You see a you see a broken jar, God still sees a jar. We focus on the broken jar, but God focuses on the jar. We focus on the mistakes. God still looks at the purpose that's within you. And your purpose is not gone. Failure is not final. And now let me just go ahead and clarify this because I've been working alongside these amazing men and women of God for years. Don't you dare for one second think these jokers ain't full of power and the Holy Spirit. Of God. I've seen people underestimate because of the choices. Choices does not eliminate the working power of God. And we saw that today. Amen. Don't you dare look down your nose. And I say you were here, but I can't stand. I don't even know these brothers. I'm going to fight you over these jokes. Because these are my brothers. And we should never look down. I can't stand people to say, oh, but they did this. So, no, no. Just as they did that, God will use that to do greater through him. And my brother, I'm grateful that you're learning how to love yourself. Can't nobody love you better than you. But let me tell you something. And all y'all saw from this day forward, God got a family up here in Pelham, Alabama. Him, 
for you to do something about what you notice. Amen. It's amazing that many of us notice problems, and we, uh, we, we magnify problems, we talk about problems, but never go and get the solution to the problem. And here's the solution to the problem. You. Uh -oh. You want to shout, don't you? You want to pray. You want the money to come. You want the house to come. You want this to come. Well, that'll come, but hey, if we have to say something, that ain't the benefit, nor is that the joy of the kingdom of God. Okay. It's reaching the lost, saving the lost. Yes. Being a blessing. Yes. I thank God for this man, Pastor David. Uh, I, I, I have yet, I, I've met this, I've met a few years ago. This guy has a true heart for people, a true heart to see God be a blessing. Uh, how many of you remember the, the tornado that went through Fultondale a few, few months ago? You know, horrible. Uh, he drove me through it last week, uh, last Monday. I didn't realize how bad off it was. Uh, I will say this, if you saw it on the news, it didn't do it justice. And he drove me through all the stuff uh, that he saw. But what I appreciate is he didn't just drive me through and say, you see that house, you see this house, you see this house used to be there. And I mean, houses were demolished, gone. Nothing is there. What I praise God about this man of God is he didn't just drive me through uh, all the, 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 the destruction. He actually drove me through the destruction to the solution of what he himself and a few others have helped construct with the relief fund for Fultondale. And he walked me into a gymnasium that was packed with all kind of stuff that this man of God and others raised to be the solution, to be the help, to be a relief to those people. Amen. Amen. See, we don't shout this stuff like that. Well, what you wait the shallow? Yeah. See, the shallow point is the fact that there was a relief. Yeah. Not true the fact that these people are still got to get their houses, but there were people that God used. Yeah. This brother was up every single morning. I don't know how much sleep he got, if he got any, every day, petitioning. And there was times you were up there by yourself. Nobody showed up, but you were there. You were there. See, here's the thing. The manifestation of God is not your ability to quote scripture, wow. but to live scripture. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. Now, everybody's not called to do that. Let me make that clear. Everyone doesn't have that job, and that's okay. But I can do a part. Everybody's not called uh, to a team challenge. But you can do a part. Well, Bishop, what is my purpose? What keeps you up at night? What makes you angry when you see God? This is something should change right here. Because whatever you say that something should change in, that's your purpose. Because whenever you want to see change, there must be a key inside of you to change. That's good. Amen. Okay. So what's keeping you up at night? When you say, I want to see change here, that's your purpose. That's why the enemy is fighting you not to do it. Because watch this, watch this. I already, I already hear your excuses. I already hear it. Get up, get your butt. I ain't asking your butt. Get your butt out the way. That's why you're not walking in your purpose, because you got too many butts in front of you. Bitch, I ain't got enough money. Hey, ain't nobody asking you about that. I ain't got enough this. I don't have enough resources. Resources come when you move. When Moses stood before the Red Sea and Pharaoh's army was behind him and the Red Sea was in front of him, he began to cry out to God and God told him to do one thing. You know what he said, brother? He said, lift up your staff. Don't make no sense in the world. I got an army behind me and a Red Sea in front of me. What in the world is his staff going to do? But instead of questioning what God told him to do, he lifted up the staff and guess what happened? The Red Sea didn't pull. Until he lifted the staff. What am I saying? You will not see the evidence of what God has spoken to you.
power of God make anything a weapon in your hand. Yeah. Read the story of Elijah. When the men of God were picking fruit from the vine, and it was sour. And fix some stew. The Bible said it was death in the pot. And Elijah said, Bring me some flour. Wasn't nothing special about that flour. But you know what made that flour special? When it touched Elijah's hand. Your hand makes things supernatural. That's right. Your hand makes things supernatural. Your hand, that's why growing up, our grandparents didn't have a lot of money. But they knew how to multiply their bean wings. They knew how to multiply that stuff. That's why Jesus said, what are y'all about? They ain't got no money. Two fish, five loaves of bread. That's all we got. No, that's all you got.
might do worse than that. I don't think I, I see that. I thank God that what he did. Do you think God just moved for them only? Right. Do you think God just moved for me because I got a title? Right. My the Bible says he has given everyone the same measure of faith. That's right. Woo. I just choose to work my faith. You choose to work your excuses. And I'm trying to pull you from a place of excuses because a title doesn't give you greater anointing. That's what the church has lied to many of us at. That's right. And that's why all of us at, let me call a pastor. It's good to call a pastor. Yes, you should call them the elders to pray for the sick. But the same faith that an elder got, you have it too. That's right. That's right. That's why many of us come to the house of God. Let me get a word from Bishop. Can you not get a word from yourself? <laughs> Are you not as anointed? Yeah. Are you not as powerful? Do we got different Bibles? The same book I read from is the same book you have. But see, that's why many pastors love to make you dependent upon them. That's good. That's good. Say that. It's my job to make you less dependent on me and more dependent on him. Because I love the fact that if I come to the hospital, Bishop, I'm glad you showed up. We are praying. We just want you to see the results of what we pray about. Amen. Amen. Instead of having to wait till we show up and we will wait for Bishop to get here. No, you got the same authority. You're walking in the same supernatural power that I'm walking in. We don't have a different spirit in us. We all have the Holy Spirit. This man's wife is in Africa. He couldn't go see her. He couldn't lay hands. But that's why I praise God that our word is not flesh. It's spirit. It's tangible and transferable. Which means what I can't touch, I can transfer. So if I can't lay a hand, I can speak a word. And the same word that's powerful here in Birmingham, Pelham, Montevallo, Selma, Alabama, just as powerful over there in Africa. Yeah. Yeah. Can, I, can I help you understand something? Yeah. Your word, our word, is not a word that's only submitted or locked in to America. Right. Amen. 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 Nor is it a word that's only locked in to the world. Amen. 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 Nor is it a word that's locked into the universe. Amen. Amen. Our word is eternal. Yes, it is. Which means it does not have no ending, nor does it have a beginning. It is not specified to one place. So the same word I have in Alabama is the same word that can work over there now. When you believe. And so that's why I've been doing a lot of teaching. Because many of us, we don't teach on the power of God or his greatness. That's why we mention or talk about God and the power of God. We don't really shout or we don't even become excited. We know about his giving, but we don't know about him. And why is that? Because the moment you realize how great he is, the moment you realize how great you are. Watch this. The moment you realize how much he loves you is the moment you realize how much you love you. That's why the devil don't want you to find out how much he loves you. Because when you find out how much he loves you, it unlocks everything else in your life. Amen. That's why many of us are limited in walking in the supernatural, or walking in power, or walking in miracles, because we don't know the miracle worker. Right. Amen. That's good. You cannot work in miracles without the miracle worker. Without that's right. Because let me help you understand something. It's not you that's doing the miracle. Right. Right. It's him working through you. But when you don't know him, you don't know how to operate through him. Real quickly, go to Colossians. I'll give you some shout scripture. Last week we learned that we are not fleshly bodies with the spirit. We are spiritual beings that have a fleshly body. Say this with me, I'm spirit first. I'm spirit first. Amen. So you should work on your spirit before anything else. 
That's why the first thing you should do in the morning is wake up and seek the kingdom of God. Why? Because that's the first thing your spirit seeks out. Your flesh seeks out the social media. Uh -huh. What they post today. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but your social media don't benefit your flesh. It benefits your spirit. Matter of fact, social media make you mad.
That's why when I connect to my man, my man of God, people always ask, what made you connect to him? What was it about him? Because that was the first time I ever felt conviction. Because he didn't tolerate. Because one thing he always taught us in Christ, you're not sinless, but you learn how to sin less. Amen. And we don't even make excuses for your sin. Right. Because your sin is what separates you from walking in the supernatural power of God. But instead of me preaching on your sin, let me preach and tell you and teach you about what's in you. And when you start focusing on that, you won't see most of us say, I ain't gonna sin no more, 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 I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna do it. I ain't gonna do it. Lord is hard. Jesus be with me. Lord. Then you sin. Oh God, I'm the worst Christian ever. Oh God, I see I'm forget I'm giving up on this Christian walk. Because whatever you were, when you always keep it sin in the forefront of your mind. Right. Because you always worry about not sinning. But God didn't even tell you to worry about not sinning. You know what he said, dude? You are ready. Seek ye first. Right. Put that in the forefront of your mind. But your flesh always keeps sin in front of you. Your spirit always keeps the kingdom in front of you. See, let me tell you something. Everything in your natural life will benefit from your spiritual growth. That's good. That's good. Everything, your marriage benefits when you grow spiritual. Come on. That's good. That's good. Your job will grow That's good. when you grow spiritual. That's good. That's good. You get elevated when you grow spiritually. Favor will find you when you grow spiritually. Your flesh will benefit from the growth of your spirit. But your spirit will never benefit from the growth of your flesh. Because your degree ain't going to get you into heaven. Your career and your job ain't going to get you into heaven. But heaven will make your career a lot better. Heaven will make your business a lot better. Heaven will multiply everything you put in this path. See, that's why most of us are struggling because you're trying to build it with your flesh. Mm -hmm. So you're learning the business, which is great, but you're only growing your flesh. Uh, but your flesh can only, your flesh is limited. Your spirit on the other hand. Yes, I I never knew when I had my, when I had my first house when I was 23. I had something to break in the house and I didn't know how to do it. I ain't had much money. I was too proud to call home and ask for help. So I was like, I don't want, I don't want my parents to know I can't, I can't make it. Mm -hmm. And so I said, Lord, help me. And so I went and looked at this thing. Didn't have no, didn't have no instructions, no nothing. Didn't have it. All of a sudden, I went and started working that thing. And the Holy Ghost said, uh, hey, get that button out. Wow. That ain't, that ain't the regular two. We will make it one. <laughs> we will make it one. And Jarvis, I fixed it with a button knife. Saved $150 hey. with a butter knife. Because the Holy Spirit will infiltrate the natural and take things in the natural that don't make sense and say, use that, it'll work for you. See, your flesh is limited. So your flesh say, I gotta call somebody. Your spirit say, I already got somebody. And then watch this. We had an inspection here in the church. And I walked through this whole church this whole week praying. I said, God, make this happen, make this happen, make this. I'm speaking this, God, because you're preaching this, you're teaching this. And I will not, I don't want to be a theoretical preacher. Right. Right. Preachers who preach stuff they don't walk. Right. So I walked through this whole house and this whole church, and we had an inspector come in, and uh, he had looked and said, we got to get rid of this, 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 and so forth, yada, yada. And then all of a sudden, we had to get the fire extinguishers. Mm -hmm. And I, I took the fire extinguishers and said, man, there's going to be more money. Walk right down here to the shop down here. Put the, put the uh, extensions on the table. I said, well, we got an inspection coming up. And I said, we're, we're in the church right now. He said, oh, you're in church right now? He said, I said, yeah. He said, oh, okay. So he goes in the back and he brings, he starts giving his long thing, teaching about the fire extinguishers, which I could tell that's how I'm like, I'm ready to go, but I'm gonna act like, you know, you know, so uh, he gives me all this description, all this kind of stuff. And he said, at the very end, he said, but, you know, extinguishers are just like God. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. When God gives you a new life, 
And he said, a new life with God costs you nothing. And I was like, oh, okay. That's good, man. Amen. And I pulled out my wallet. I'm like, how much is it? He said, you didn't hear me. And I did. Because my flesh was ready to go. But all of a sudden, he said, this is like God giving you a new life. It costs you nothing. And I still got the card in my hand. He said, it costs you nothing. And I was like, you're giving this to me? Take it. And whatever else y'all need down at that church, come and let me know. And we'll take care of you. Let me finish. Never met that man a day in my life, but my spirit knew him. See, your flesh come into contact with strangers. Your spirit come into contact with brothers and sisters.
You are not your past. That's good. You are not your mess ups. See, your mess ups identify your flesh, not your spirit. Your flesh identifies with your addictions. Your spirit identifies with his goodness. That's why your flesh will always make you look at yourself where you are. But your spirit says, I'm somewhere in the future. And I look much better. Amen. I see myself somewhere. Colossians. And I'm going to have to end this. Jesus. Colossians chapter 1. Look at verse 13. Watch this. Remember I told you about the kingdom in you, right? Right? Watch this. For well, he five. has rescued us uh -huh. from the domination of darkness. Oh, he rescued us from, from the, the dominions or the domination. In other words, the mindset of darkness. Right. He rescued me from dark thinking. Thank God. He rescued me from ignorant thinking. Yeah. He rescued me from addictive thinking. Yeah. He rescued me from a fleshly thinking. He rescued me from We all said, I ain't gonna do this no more. We uh -huh. all been there. Don't say that like. I don't say it. God, I gotta promise you. If you, if you get me out of this, just one more time. I'll never do it again. Right. And the next day, mm -hmm. some of y'all, the next hour, yeah. the next <laughs> phone call. I'm sorry. Right. You know why? Because you have faith in your, in your ability, not, not his. That's right. not his. On, you can't save you. If we could save us, there would have been no need for a cross. Wow. That's why Jesus is known as a Savior. Because he saved us, not from hell, he saved us from us. I was the biggest devil in my own life. I didn't need haters, I had me. Come on, come on. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Keep going. He did what? He brought us. But watch this, watch this, watch this. For those who ain't never been saved, uh, I mean, say their whole life. Remember, you went to the club. Uh -huh. and, you show, <laughs> and you showed up. Uh -huh. and, and you showed up with a very important person. Yeah. Yeah. You weren't important, but the person you showed up was. Yeah. And then when they got to the door, and all of a sudden a bounce on the person at the door looks at them and say, Oh, what's up, man? Boom, boom, down, boom, boom. Yeah. They don't know you. But then that person says, oh, he's with me. I brought him. So he's able, you are able to get in, not off of you. You are able to get in off of him. Yeah. When Jesus got up out the ground, there's a very important part that he walked into, that we weren't invited to. Right. 
righteousness. Because this is his kingdom, not yours. Right, right, for sure. Keep reading. In whom we have redemption. Uh, but what, what, where is our redemption? In him. In him. Yeah, yeah. Not your good saying it. <laughs> Don't sing yourself. Don't dance yourself. Ooh, you bought that dress. It looked good on you. You look good. But that ain't redeeming you. That's why the Bible says, clothe yourself in righteousness. Clothe yourself in, clothe yourself in his righteousness. Right. Amen. Keep that finger laugh on. In whom uh -huh. we have redemption uh -huh. and the forgiveness <laughs> of sins. So not only did he bring me to a party I didn't belong to, when he brought me in this party, watch it, watch it. It's just like going to a party. And you see somebody in the party you owe some money to. You, you see them dancing over there? You know what he where was his dancing? I got gold here right now. You, you see them all over there? You you all over here. Why? Well, because you owe them something. But that your your VIP looks at you and says, What you waiting for? Okay. I owe that man. How much you owe? I don't think you can afford it. I didn't ask you that. Mm -hmm. How much you own? Come on. I own my life. I love mm. Okay. Mm. Well, I'm going to give him my life mm. in exchange for yours. Wow. So I'm going to die wow. so you can keep living oh. in this kingdom part. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, but you didn't do it. I know I didn't do it. Uh -huh. But I want you to live in this kingdom. I tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna die for everything uh -huh. that you know that you've done uh -huh. and that you don't know that you've done. Right. So when I die, there's no guilt still attached to you. <laughs> so now all I ask for you is instead of running from him, uh -huh. just run to me. Because I brought you to this point. And I'm not gonna let nobody kick you out of here. Now watch this, the only way you leave this party mm -hmm. is exactly. if you choose to. Right. Because I'm not kicking you out, you're kicking yourself out. You left the party, not me. Y'all went to a football game, and they stamp you with this stamp, and the stamp says, watch this, if you leave, because you paid to get in, right? But when you leave, the stamp shows that you already paid the price. That's how Christ is. Uh -huh. If you leave the party, uh -huh. he stamped you with something called the Holy Ghost. Wow. That even when you go back out there into the world mm -hmm. and mess up and all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. if you have time and you're able to make it back right, right. to the party, uh -huh. the bouncer will look at your hand and say, I see the seal on you. Come on back in there. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Because when God sealed you with his spirit, that seal don't leave because of your sin. That sin. Now watch this. That seal is still on you. Even when you're living in your sin. But it's not active in you. Because your sin makes it inactive. Amen. But that's why you have that spirit. I thank God we both was talking about it. When you when you put that, when you put that OE to your mouth, or you drinking that mad dog, you you smoking on that, there's something in you that says this ain't you. This ain't you. Because you still got that seal on you. That spirit. See, folks will always the church will a lot of you. And they'll say the spirit leaves when you see it. It does not leave when you see it. It's grieved when you see it. Amen. Amen. Right. Because he sees you. And he's giving you a way out. But watch this. Uh -huh. Everything that Christ does and everything that Jesus did was by invitation and invitation only. Amen. So I invite you, whosoever will. He never made us come. He invited you to come. He will never make you do right. He will invite you to do right. But he knows your flesh can't do right, so he gave you a spirit that will help you do right. Amen. And that's why we're led back by the spirit. Can I give one more scripture? Yeah. 
living a life, we're living a life in load of our, in the load of means of God, because we are not allowing the Spirit of God to be active. But watch this. And so that you will begin to know. Uh-huh. Where did I tell you the devil fights you at? In your knowledge of God. The, knowledge of God. the devil don't fight you in your knowledge of your job. Uh-huh. But watch this. You can go to your job and you know how to work your job at the back of your hand. You can work your job with your eyes closed. But as soon as the Spirit of God gives you something to pray, you'll forget that prayer the next moment because that's where the devil fights you in. Yeah. He fights you in your knowledge. Yeah. Because he knows that the more you know about God, the more powerful you become in God. That's why there's a knowledge of all college. Yeah. Wow. And so when you begin to know what immeasurable, what unlimited, what surpassing greatness of his active spiritual power is in us who believe. That's the only job you got to do is believe. See, you're trying to work for your salvation. You don't work for your salvation. You believe for your salvation. Amen. Amen. John chapter 6, Jesus says, this is the work that God has called of us to believe in the one in whom he sent. That's your job. Your job is not to see great. Your job is to believe great. And the reason why most of us are struggling because the devil is attacking us in our faith. That's why when you start preaching and teaching stuff like this, I told my wife I have to begin to pray more. Because the devil will heighten many things in your life when you begin to start walking in the power of God. By our faith. The stretches will come. Because watch this, he's attacking you in your belief. That's why sicknesses will arise greater here. Because the enemy wants to attack you in your belief. But say this, don't you stop believing. Don't you stop believing. What am I believing? Well, Bishop, what do I believe? What don't you believe? Go back. The immeasurable, unlimited, and surpassing greatness of his active spiritual power in your life. That's what you believe. But watch this. Watch this. Something happens. We lose our job. And when we lose our job, we lose our faith. Because your faith was in your job, not in his power. And so when we go to God in prayer, we'll say something like this. It's false humility. God, I'm coming to you. I know what you can do. But this right here is tough. And right when you say that, what you're actually saying is, I don't think you can really handle this. I don't really think. I don't know if you can work this. I don't know. Just try you out. You don't try God out. You believe God out. we struggle because we're trying to figure God out. And when you figure God out, you do exactly that. You figure him out. But he never asked you to figure him out. He just said, believe. Believe. God tells you to start a company. Well, God, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not smart enough. Believe. I shared with you all how I struggled even with this church. I struggled with the fact of getting this building. But God said, when you become a pro in my vision, provision will always follow. And I praise God that everything that we've needed, God has brought people to this ministry that has said, y'all need this? We got it. Y'all need that? We got it. Wow. We go, I told my wife, I said, babe, I don't know how we are where we are with as limited people that we have, even in the midst of a pandemic. Come on. And God will give you a bill everything in it, in the midst of a pandemic? God, I don't know! Well, I'm going to tell you what you don't know. You don't know my immeasurable, unlimited, surpassing greatness of my power. And I'm trying to show you. I'm giving you a building so I can show you. Not how great your church is, but how great my immeasurable unlimited and surpassing greatness. What is God calling you to to scare in your flesh? Because what's scaring your flesh might be waking up your spirit. All right. You are greater than what you know. Yes, sir. You are greater than what you know. I want to 
are in here to testimonies. Write them. Send them to us. Share the testimonies of what God is doing in your life. Now watch this. Some of y'all will wake up tomorrow and write them out. You want to know why? Because here's the problem. Watch this. You'll wake up and write nothing because you don't know, you don't understand that waking up itself is a miracle. Amen. Amen. Yes, yes. 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 Yes.
dele. Some of y'all, all of us are going to have the David experience. David did not have a perfect life. But the Bible says, we got the scripture, but when David passed, it read something like this. And David went on to do great and mighty works of the kingdom. See that? And David went on to do great and mighty works. Yes, God. That's the rest of my story. Amen. Put your name in that. And Maurice Amen. went on to do great and mighty works for the kingdom. Pastor Turner went on to do great and mighty works of the kingdom. Jarvis Davis went on to do great and mighty works of the kingdom. What's the rest of your story? And I went on to do great and mighty works for the kingdom. only dead to my sins, not to life. I will live and not die. I speak prophetically over every person in this house who receives. You will live and you will not die. Your business, your ministry, your marriage, your mind will flourish. Will flourish. And you will go on to do great and mighty works for the kingdom. Your job better watch out when you go to work tomorrow. You're going to walk in there with some authority. Your house going to look at you and say, who is this? Who is this? When you touch your donut, your donut will say, wait a minute, I ain't never felt this before. I don't know what this is. Because you're going to go on and do great and mighty works for the kingdom. Father, I speak life over my brothers and sisters that are here right now. And I even sense the spirit of suicide. The desire to let go. It's too much. It's too hard. God, I don't know if I can do it. But you can and you will, not by your own power. It's not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord. I don't know if I can go on like this. And I pray right now that there be a release of financial favor over every person in this room right now. Because many of you have become excited about this little stimulus check that's coming with that ain't even enough to cover what you gotta go through. Yeah, yeah. But God is saying don't worry about the government. Seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added. I see an open heaven right now. I see an open heaven right now. And I see it. I'm telling you what I see right now. I see. I see wealth raining down upon you right now. I'm telling you what I see. And I know I'm not going to talk about finances and stuff because I'm all about that. But I see, I cannot deny what I see. I see angels ascending and descending right now. I see fresh revelation and fresh wind coming in your life right now. I see breakthrough coming in your life right now. Every hand lifted. Every hand lifted. Those who speak in your heavenly language, speak in your heavenly language right now. I see it, I see it, I don't push out. Even for those watching live on the internet, we see it right now. I don't push out. 
This is an atmosphere that whatever you need, you speak it by faith. You speak it by faith. We speak right now to the collarbone of that woman of God in Africa. Right now, God heals. Heal. Intestines right now, heal. Heal, God. Heal, God. Mental powers, heal right now. Unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. Whoever is struggling with unforgiveness right now, what I need for you to do is I need for you to speak whoever name it is that you need to forgive and speak their names and say, I forgive you right now. Speak it. Speak it. Speak it right now. Speak their name. Whoever hurt you. Whoever hurt you, speak it right now because this is for them. This is for you. This is for you. Because that unforgiveness has been blocked from your spiritual growth. You were not able to grow beyond your unforgiveness, your hatred, your anger. I even hear someone right now who's angry with God. Because you're mad that life is not how you thought it should be. And you have said, God, if you love me, then why is this happening? Why is this happening? Why is that happening? Why isn't this happening? And I'm upset. I'm, I'm, I'm mad. I hear the Lord saying, I have heard your cry. I have heard your cry. I'm asking you just to believe. I did not do this to you. But it has happened for you. Just believe. And I hear right now even some saying, but how do I believe when you're just like the Father with the Son? And he said, Father, Jesus, help my unbelief. So right now, those who even show up in your faith, lift up your hands and say, Holy Spirit, teach me to believe. Come on, teach me to believe. Teach me to trust in God. If you're struggling in that area, don't lie. Lift up those hands. Teach me to believe your word. Teach me to trust you. When you say walk, teach me to trust in your word to walk. When you say go, teach me to trust in your word to go. Make me teachable. Teach me in my bedroom. Teach me in my car. Teach me when I'm at work. Teach me when I'm at the park with my children. Teach me through my children. Teach me through your creation. Teach me through everything that's around me. Allow my spirit to be spiritual sensitive to your realm of the kingdom. That when I feel your wind outside, I know that's your breath breathing upon me. Teach me, God. I may begin to know who you are. You're doing something new. You're doing something new. David, don't you quit. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. Break down if you have to. Cry if you have to. But don't you quit. You are too great to quit. You are too great to quit. And David went on to do mighty works. There is an attack on pastors right now. There is an attack on pastors right now. There is an attack on the fivefold ministry right now. There are pastors that are committing suicide now. While more greater than any time before. They are pastors that are dealing with depression and anxiety now than it's ever done before. They are pastors who are struggling with temptations and they don't know how to run from it. Don't you give up. Don't you give up. 
I hear the Lord even say, your spirit even crying out, precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on. Amen. Amen. Keep playing. 
Thank you. 